any second could be his last. This boy spent over six agonising hours in shark-infested waters. Six hours is pretty long, getting not rescued. A gasp, like a... <gasps> he stopped talking. The boy could have died if not for the love of his father, which made little Julian fight for his life. If he stops freezing, I just let go of the bucket. These two have an incredible survival story. Stay with us to find out how they found a beacon of light in the black icy night. Micah went out fishing with his son and a friend in Caloundra when he felt a freezing water at his feet during the night. I just woke up because my feet were wet. So I just quickly got up, woke up Stephen. I reckon I even kicked him. I woke to him screaming, looked around and there was probably 30 centimetres of water all over the floor of the boat. In the blink of an eye, the boat toppled over. The flare, life vests and emergency beacon were sinking away. Half of water coming in. The boat just instantly rolled, pitched and rolled. Everything's got trapped up in the bay of the boat. Micah alerted the coast guards of their immediate danger, just before the boat started to flip upside down in the water. Could they escape and reach the ocean surface in time? The boat sunk all within seconds. They got trapped up under the vinyl awning of the boat. They were down a fair way. They come up with a big gasp there and they both basically tried to climb onto my back and they were pulling me under. They were really freaking out. Panicked, Stephen had to tell them to calm their nerves. They hadn't sunk into the darkness trapped in the boat and little Julian tried to be their beacon in the gloomy night. I said, we're right, we're, we're all alive, we're above water. Julian calmed me down and said, it will be all right, Dad. He actually pointed towards Calandra and said, oh, we just have to swim that way, Dad. But in the pitch black night, 14 kilometres from the shore, who or what could save them from their doom? Two life-saving buckets popped up from the sunken boat below. The heavens must have heard their desperate cries for help. We were just clinging to that 15 litre bucket, which I picked up from a, a job site for free. I just thought it will come handy one day. I squeezed on the bucket really hard. I'm not <coughs> losing it. Stephen had grabbed his phone during the chaos and called SOS. I'm quite amazing with the ups and downs of the swell that it actually held a phone call. Uh, enough to tell them that we had no life jackets on, we're, we're at the Clounder nine mile fishing area. Yeah, that was the phone call. That's all we got out. Their bodies floated above the murky waters of the Pacific, right where Stephen had caught a shark two weeks prior. Were their souls destined to meet a tragic fate? A shark won't eat you. Everybody says this. It's not even true. We never see tips at the night time, therefore. Julian was sure his family would be safe and protected. But an hour started to pass while they froze in the icy ocean. And then two hours passed. Julian's bright spirit was fading into the abyss. I was basically just breathing in his face just to sort of keep him warm. I could see that Julian is getting way slower in his responses. I'm trying, in my mind, thinking, no, I don't want to lose him. You know, how can I? stop them sinking to the bottom. It's just, it's not easy. The brisk wind was blowing the ghastly waves higher and higher, and Stephen could see Julian was gasping for air. He responded to my request to spit the water out. I put myself between the waves and Mikey and Julian by letting the waves hit me, me taking the brunt of them. It allowed him to breathe a lot, lot easier and cleaner air. Was Julian Honer nearing a painful end? His dad had never seen him in such a devastating state. Micah was contemplating scary thoughts of ending his life. He stopped talking. He's just my one and only. The reason why I live, the reason why I breathe, the reason why I do anything in life. I know if he goes, I'm going with him. I wouldn't want to live without my son. The sun started rising, but Julian had been unconscious for four hours, and Micah was barely holding on to the frail floating bucket. Would he surrender and let his son's lifeless body sink? Floating aimlessly, the clouds of heaven slowly opened. A helicopter flew above them and a man came down to rescue them. They were saved after six torturous hours at sea. Well, as the diver came down to us, I don't know if it was saying it or sinking it, but just basically take my boy, get him out of here. He's cold, 
He's not breathing. He's got no pulse. Technically, he's got, this kid's dead. Julian was rushed to hospital with a dire case of hypothermia. Still in a coma, Micah was squeezing his son's hand next to his bed. He imagined all the warm, beautiful moments he had with his son, doing what they loved most. I just love catching fish. It's right. just so fun. He'd even like practice at home how to throw it like a little baby, like a little kid just being able to walk. He fulfills me. Just one smile of him and I know everything, everything is all right. Could a father's love bring his son back to life? Julian's eyes popped open and he made a miraculous recovery, forgetting all about the suffering he had endured. He couldn't wait to go fishing with his dad again. I'm going careful. Going careful? Oh, you caught a shark, Gillies. We reinsured each other that how much we love each other and he gave me kisses and I gave him kisses. And... Julian was thankful to his dad for showering him with love. Their strong bond kept each other's hearts beating that night. Hold your kids tight and tell them how much you love them. You never know when you'll get another chance.